From Vandenberg Air Force Base in California, you're watching live coverage of the second launch attempt of NOAA's Joint Polar Satellite System 1, also known as JPSS-1, the first in the series of four highly sophisticated environmental satellites designed to increase the timeliness and accuracy of weather forecast. Hi, I'm Tori McClendon. Thanks for joining us. Today's launch of the United Launch Alliance Delta II was originally scheduled to take flight early yesterday morning and is now slated for 1.47 a.m. Pacific time with a one minute and six second window from Space Launch Complex II. Coming up on the show, you'll learn more about NOAA's JPSS-1 spacecraft. You're also gonna hear about the history of the Delta II rocket and its important role in this mission. For now, let's go to Mike Curie and Josh Finch who are monitoring the countdown activities inside the Delta II launch control. Mike and Josh, how are things progressing so far over there? Very well, thank you very much, Tori. We are about halfway through, maybe a little bit more than halfway through a planned 20 minute built in hold at the uh, T minus 15 minute mark. Uh, everything is going well. We will resume the count at 1.22 a.m. Pacific time. Fueling operations began on time more than an hour ago and both stages are ready for this penultimate launch of the Delta II rocket. It's loaded with RP-1, a rocket-grade kerosene, and with liquid oxygen. There are no significant technical issues being worked at this time. The Delta II rocket and NOAA's JPSS-1 spacecraft are healthy and ready for an on-time liftoff. We are standing by for a weather briefing from Vandenberg Air Force Base Launch Weather Officer from the 30th Space Wing, Officer Cap Captain Ross Malagani. He'll give his final planned weather briefing to the launch team. Attention on the weather conference net, stand by for the weather briefing. All stations acknowledge. Elbow. Elbow. Delta RC. LD. LD. NLM. NLM. OD. OD. Slick. And OD for slick. Copy. OO, provide current and predicted T0 status for safety and launch agency constraints with probabilities of violation. This briefing will be displayed on CCTV channels 9 and 10. Beginning with channel 9, current satellite loop indicates a continued stream of high-level clouds uh, in central California. Uh, current radar loop indicates uh, no significant returns. Winds at the 102-foot level on Tower 2 uh, shows uh, directions uh, swinging back out of the west. Um, Winds are very light. They're currently three knots with occasional gusts to seven knots. Um, turning to channel 10, there are no watches, warnings, or advisories in effect. And for a primary day, we're still going for that high cloud with unrestricted visibility and no weather. Uh, temperatures are gonna range in the uh, low, uh, correction, upper 40s to low 50s. Winds are gonna swing out of the east at six to nine knots. Um, we are currently green for rain safety LCCs, and we're forecasting 0% PLV. User constraints are also currently green, and we're forecasting 0% POV. And for the backup day, we're going for some increased clouds. Um, a stratus, a basis of 200 feet with visibility reduced to uh, three-quarters of a mile to a mile and a half with fog. Temperature will be in the uh, low to mid-50s, and winds will be out of the east southeast six to nine knots. Forecast POV for backup days, 0% for the range safety LCCs, as well as the user strength. They will be 0% uh, POV as well. And this concludes my briefing. Elwo indicates clear to proceed. All stations report questions or acknowledge. Elwo. Elwo. Delta RC. RC. LD. Uh, LWO. So do you have a uh, uh, wind strength predictions for uh, upper atmosphere? Uh, right now, we're still uh, forecasting a max wind of 125 knots out of the west, out of 250 degrees. Out of 250? That's permanent. Um, and what is it today? I can you repeat that? I'm sorry. Uh, what are the... Uh, what's the wind speed and direction for today, right now? Uh, right now, our last uh, balloon showed a wind out of 250, 114 knots. That was at 34,350. Okay. So so we have 114 knots at 250, and you're predicting uh, what again for tomorrow? Oh, 
uh, 125 knots. And 250? That's correct. Okay, okay. So uh, a little bit more wind, same direction. I copy that. Um, how about uh, 48 hours? 48 hours? I expect the uh, I expect the wind direction to be a little more westerly, uh, 260, but uh, um, we're going to expect winds to be 120 knots as the uh, next frontal system approaches. I copy that, so 120 at 260. Permanent. Very good. Um, can you give me yeah, 24 out from there? I will have to go um, look at a few charts and. Okay. okay, maybe you could feed that through the RC. Uh, nothing else from the LD. Thank you very much. Appreciate your support. Copy LD, NLM. And it's more along the lines of what LD asked. Elwo, um, more pointed is when do you expect a significant change in either direction or magnitude? For the upper level or surface wind? Upper level. The upper level, there are going to be no significant changes um, uh, through 24 hours um, as that uh, system continues to approach. Uh, we're in a pretty zonal pattern aloft, and the jet stream is going to remain pretty much anchored over California. Uh, granted, the jet core is going to be well to the north, but uh, um, very little change. I copy. Okay. So, so understanding that that is our... Uh our driving constraint, we are interested in any kind of forecast of when that will change. Um, not not right now, but uh, if you can assess that and get back to us. Uh, we will assess it and get back to you. Thank you. Okay, copy NLM, OD. OD. Slick. And for Slick. Weather conference net clear. And as you heard, uh, a uh, pretty hearty discussion on upper level winds. The ground winds are, are negligible today. We have a 100% go weather forecast for the ground for launch, 0% uh, percent probability of violation, but uh, obviously there are con some concerns about the upper level winds that are under discussion at this time. Uh, we have picked up our count. We're currently at T minus 14 minutes, two seconds and counting. And as we continue to count, we're going to be counting to our next built-in hold at the T-minus four-minute mark. That is a planned 10-minute hold that will, uh, during which time at the beginning, just like yesterday, NASA Launch Manager Omar Baez coordinated a new liftoff time. So uh, we'll be predicting a liftoff today at 1.47 and 36 seconds a.m. Pacific time. Teams of managers and engineers from NOAA, NASA, and United Launch Alliance have been on console for over four hours in several launch control facilities at Vandenberg Air Force Base. We're located in the Remote Launch Control Center, also called the RLCC. From here, NASA manager Omar Baez from NASA's Launch Services Program, Launch Director Tom Heater from United Launch Alliance, or ULA, and Launch Conductor Scott Barney of ULA are overseeing the final steps expected to lead to launch. And we are pleased at this time to be joined by Dr. Steve Voltz, Director of NOAA's Satellite and Information Service. Dr. Voltz, thank you again for joining us. I'm glad to be here, although didn't want to come here a second day in a row. Well, we're, we're hoping today will be the magic day. We'll see. We wanted to talk with you again uh, because it was very interesting uh, what you consider to be the biggest challenge to get to this point. Right. Well, as I said, the challenge was the, the technical challenges are things that we're used to dealing with. Um, we are a great team, industry, government working together. The, the larger challenge is knowing this is a long-term mission. We've been building these satellites or planning these for decades and getting this one from the, from the design stage to the programmatic, getting all the stakeholders engaged, getting everybody working on the same page for the last five to six years has been really essential. And uh, the team has really maintained their focus on that. And, and NOAA is just really proud to be the leader of this, this NASA, NOAA, and industry team getting this critical satellite into orbit as soon as we can. So as head of NOAA satellites, how does it feel to finally have JPSS-1 at the launch site? Um, 
it'll feel better when it's in space. It's great to be at the launch site. It's uh, it's it's just a real thrill. And I know how many people have spent decades, literally decades of their lives, working on this program, and uh, seeing the accomplishment and and the relief of getting this in space, so that we can again have a stable and healthy satellite constellation in orbit with two healthy working satellites to provide the critical services, and we can start working on the next ones, which um, we launch in about four years from now. So. Yeah, I, I was just going to ask you how this fits into uh, NOAA's next generation plan for uh, multiple satellites. Well, this is the first of four of a constellation that, well, series of constellations. So we, we like to have two healthy satellites in space at once so that we never have any r risk of interruption of critical services. And this will get us to that space for now. And the next one, JPSS-2, is in development right now. And the instruments are coming together under the spacecraft soon. And it's scheduled for launch in 21, continuing that long-term continuity that we've been doing since the early 70s for this program. Very good. Well, we, okay. we thank you again for your time. Okay. Thank you, and let's go JPSS. Let's get to space. Absolutely. Go NOAA, go JPSS. Okay. And so with that, uh, we'll go back to Tori McClendon for more information about this important launch. Tori? Thanks, guys. The Joint Polar Satellite System, or JPSS, is a collaborative program between NOAA and NASA. JPSS is the nation's next generation polar orbiting environmental satellite system that will gather a multitude of global measurements. The series of four highly sophisticated weather satellites will provide greater imaging, increased resolution, and faster coverage, which will increase the timeliness and accuracy of forecast three to seven days in advance of extreme weather events. NOAA's JPSS satellite system will provide weather observations through 2038. Let's take a closer look at this polar orbiting satellite system and its significance to the future of weather forecasting. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, with the support of their partners at the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, will launch the JPSS-1 satellite, the first operational satellite in NOAA's next generation polar orbiting satellite system. Join us for a front row seat to this launch as we take you inside the JPSS-1 satellite. With an ever-growing need for environmental data, the United States relies on NOAA's Joint Polar Satellite System or JPSS. This system provides the next significant technological and scientific advancement in observations gathered from a polar orbit. The images seen here were captured by NOAA's current polar orbiter, the NOAA-NASA Suomi MPP satellite. Still in orbit, it continues to forge a path for the JPSS program. Every time you check your phone or TV for your local weather, you're getting a forecast that relies on information provided by three of JPSS's state-of-the-art instruments. The Advanced Technology Microwave Sounder, the Visible Infrared Imaging Radiometer Suite, and the Cross-Track Infrared Sounder are critical for weather forecasters at NOAA's National Weather Service. In fact, 85% of the data feeding today's weather forecast models come from polar orbiting satellites like JPSS-1. The ATMS instrument is JPSS-1's next generation cross-track microwave sounder, providing information about the physical properties of our atmosphere, such as temperature and moisture. The CRIS instrument aboard JPSS-1 will be the most advanced infrared sounder ever placed in orbit. With over 2,200 channels, each observing a different layer of the atmosphere, CRIS provides meteorological data in greater detail than ever before. The VIRS instrument collects visible and infrared imagery of Earth's land, atmosphere, cryosphere, and oceans, and produces a vast array of unique environmental observations. Some of our most stunning images of Earth from space, like the ones you see here, are produced by the VIRS instrument currently being flown on Suomi MPP. CRIS, ATMS, and VIRS are essential for the National Weather Service and daily weather forecasting. JPSS also features two other advanced instruments. They are the clouds and the Earth's radiant energy system and the ozone mapping and profiler suite. The OMPS instrument monitors the health of the planet's ozone layer and continues a crucial global data stream produced by current ozone monitoring systems. JPSS-1 series system is essential to understanding the amount of heat and energy radiating to and from Earth. 
While each instrument alone is an incredibly powerful tool for environmental observation, the five instruments aboard JPSS-1 are designed to work in tandem to provide a much more complete picture of environmental phenomena. JPSS-1 is an incredible machine. We are excited that you can join us as we see it off on its mission to continue a legacy of vital contributions to United States weather forecasting. The Delta II rocket has a well-celebrated history with 153 vehicles previously flown. NOAA's JPSS-1 is the 53rd Delta II mission for NASA. The Delta II on this mission is flying the 7920-10 configuration, consisting of two stages and nine strap-on boosters. In addition to JPSS-1, the Delta II rocket is taking up five CubeSats, which will be deployed in succession after spacecraft separation. Today's broadcast will cover launch activities through CubeSat deployment. We're now about 15 minutes away from launch. Coming up on a planned hold and the count, let's go back to Mike and Josh in the control center for an update. How's it going over there, guys? Hey, Tori, we have some uh, breaking news to pass on. Unfortunately, uh, as you heard during the weather briefing, there was quite a bit of discussion about upper level winds. Upper level winds are a concern because of the uh, safety of the rocket after it leaves the launch pad. You want to ensure that the rocket is not buffeted by severe winds, that there's no wind shear or anything that could uh, be a concern for the safety of the rocket and, of course, it's important NOAA JPSS-1 payload. Uh, managers have assessed the weather, the upper level winds, and have determined that uh, between now and the predicted liftoff time, there would not be any possibility of improving that forecast. So with six minutes and 42 seconds left, uh, on the T0 count and 16 minutes and 42 seconds prior to the planned liftoff, launch director Tom Heater informed launch conductor Scott Barney. Scott, Scott Barney sorry, I was listening to something in my ear uh, that we are calling the count uh, for today. We have scrubbed for the day. Uh, they will continue to assess the situation for tomorrow, although, as you heard, upper-level winds look as if they are going to be fairly consistent for the next couple of days. Managers will uh, convene a meeting and discuss precisely when the next launch opportunity will be. However, at this time, we're setting up for a 24-hour turnaround and a uh, potential launch tomorrow at the same time, 1.47 a.m. Pacific time. We will, uh, of course, pass on more information via the web and uh, through other social means as possible as soon as we have some more concrete information. But for now, Tori, we're going to uh, send it back to you with, once again, the information that uh, we have scrubbed for today, primarily because of uh, unacceptable upper-level winds that would be harmful to the safety of the Delta II rocket and the NOAA JPSS-1 payload. So back to you, Tori. Thanks, guys. So as you just heard, the launch has been scrubbed for today. We're setting up for a potential 24-hour turnaround. Live coverage on NASA TV will begin again at 1.15 a.m. Eastern Time. I'm sorry, that's Pacific Time. That concludes today's coverage. For more information about this mission, visit www.nesdis.noaa.gov or www.nasa.gov.